Hi guys, it's Matt here from Maxon UK, and in this R20 video, I'm going to be showing you how the new Open VDB has already been helping me with 3D printing. So if you're anything like me, sometimes you model things and you just do what works for the image. They're not necessarily built incredibly well. And then you think, hey, I'm going to send this off to print. And you come back with a little bit of a mess or a whole load of errors where it says, nah, this, this model's just not built very well. You've got bits intersecting or you've got giant gaps and things like that that have got a problem. Uh, and I'm going to show you how I've been able to get round some of that with the new volume builder in Cinema 4D R20. So here is the uh, offending model, as it were, that I've had a problem with in the past. Um, it's uh, like a sculpture base. So you can see that, you know, for an image it's not too bad, but when we come to look at things like this, you see we've got problems under the hands where we've got gaps and depending on the type of 3D printer that you are going to use then it's going to cause some issues. We've also got stuff, if I look inside, we've got things intersecting. Now I built this a long time ago and way before um, 3D sculpting was a thing. Um, so what I want really this to look like is though it is all merged and meshed together and that's going to really help me with my 3D printing. Not only that, but I can also hollow the object out. So if you're going to use any of this kind of laser scintillating stuff, um, or you are going to use maybe some of the new uh, UV resin things, or you just want to use less filament when you're doing any of the um, FDM stuff, I'm going to show you how you can use the new VDB stuff to be able to do that. So the first thing I need to do is I've got the part and then I'm going to uh, alt-click on the volume builder and that's going to produce uh, the most pixelated version of my model in existence. So I'm just going to whack that down straight to one centimeter and you can see that actually that's that's still too, um, still too big. Um, so let's try 0 0.5, no, 0 0.1. OK, there we go. That's a little bit better. Um, now, as my model is roughly the size that I want to print it, you know, even though that's 30 centimetres, that's still quite large. So you can scale up the model to change the voxel size or you can scale it the voxel size down. But you can see we're getting some nice joins here. Um, and maybe if we've got any issues under the arms and so on and so forth, then I can use a sphere or something in there just to fill that out. And it's so easy to do. So just take a sphere, you know, which is going to be absolutely huge at the moment. So let's just make that two centimeters. And then I can put that, you know, under the arm, under the hand, and just merge that together. And that will blend that a bit. Um, you know, you may want to just fill out the detail so that you know that you're not going to get any issues. Mm object just squish that hand of that object a bit so it's not quite so obvious um obviously this was going to really vary depending on the model that you guys are going to use and you know so let's just add in another sphere and move that over the other side just so it does a similar thing and obviously you can use various different bits of cinema 4d to take this out or perhaps the other option is maybe if I go to my volume builder and I just increase the size of my voxels again. So I'm getting a little bit more of a blur. And that's filled in those gaps nicely. So there are a couple of different ways to solve that issue. You might lose some detail though. And then let's put that in a volume measure. And I can say, hey, that's not too bad. That looks like it's all sculpted. Um, you know, you can increase or decrease the voxel range threshold, which will change, you know, sort of the look of all of this. Maybe look at the volume builder. Perhaps actually if I did one five, I'm getting a little bit more detail in the finger and that's going to produce a little bit of supports that I think I'm going to be able to get rid of, which is not a problem. OK, so that is a nice surface there. And if you're worried about mesh topology, have a look at the grout shading with lines 
and then with the mesh you know maybe you can increase the adaptive stuff so that you're getting a few less polygons where you don't need it just in case you think that either a your computer isn't going to run it or perhaps your uh, printer slicer isn't going to do anything nice with it either and it's going to get confused so we've, we've got some stuff in there maybe the volume builder I might want to add a smooth layer um, maybe nothing that's going to uh, do that much you know you can look at the mean curvature which I think is quite a good one or you can lower the cur the uh, strength so that you're getting some smoothing but not too much and then just you know you're gonna have to judge this really as to what you think it, you're, you know you want the final look of your model to be so as you can see we've got a sort of voxeled mesh now all of the hands and everything is joined we don't have any of this nasty problem on the inside if I just go and have a look doom so you can see that it's treating it now as a nice surface so most 3d printers would now look at that and go okay that's one big surface and try and print all the way through uh, and that's fine if you want this thing to be solid which could cause a, a lot of problems um, for your bank account depending on how big you're going to print it um, or you can use this nice little method to hollow out your object, which has always been, I've found a little bit of a pain in various programs um, to hollow out an object. So in your volume builder, I'm going to drag and drop a second copy of the same thing. So I've got it twice, which might seem a bit strange, but I can have the same object twice in the volume builder, which is quite nice. And then I'm going to click subtract. Now, as you'd expect, at the moment it's almost completely disappeared because it's taken one exact shape away from the other. But what I want to do, I'm going to create a folder, which I'm going to stick at the top, and it's the folder that I'm now going to subtract. And I'm going to put that um, into that folder, which means it's now going to delete that folder. What I'm going to add into this folder is a reshape layer. And this reshape layer will dilate in, or this setting, dilate or erode the um, size of the second one that I have, because that's what it's doing in that folder. It's only having an effect in that folder, which is what I quite like. So at the moment, it's got an offset of five, which means it is dilating my shape by five centimeters, whereas I would like to erode it by five centimeters. Or considering the size of my object, I'm going to say one centimeter. Now, that pops back into existence. And what's the difference, you ask me? Well, if I just create a cube, woo, which is probably um, a lot smaller than that. So let's just do five by five by five. Okay. And I'm going to stick this also in the volume builder. Uh, this is not going to be printed. This is just going to be something to show you what's happening. And if I now go to subtract and I move my cube in, you can hopefully see that I have a hollow object with my 3D uh, volume. So if I look around there, what this has done is that if I just go to my volume builder and I say change the shape of the dilate or erode, so let's do 0 0.5, you'll see that the walls get thinner, which means that roughly my wall shape is 0 0.5 centimeters. Now, this means that if I'm using any sort of resin-based printer or if I'm doing any powder-based printing, that I could potentially create a hole in the bottom of this. Really easy. Um, let's create a cylinder, not have it that massive. Um, stick that in the bottom. Also stick that in there, which I will also put on subtract and now I have a hole in the bottom that I can get all of the loose powder or resin or whatever it is that you're going to be printing out and I have a model that's going to cost a lot less because it will only do the surface of my object um, now I really like that I think that's really useful and it's been great for me um, because I've been able to hollow out objects um, before printing as well as merging the geometry together so that I've not had a problem 
and I'm hoping that you guys can see that use with it too. It was one of the first things I saw when I first saw this um, VDB mesher is that it would be great for adding stuff to 3D models that you want to print. So if you want to add in a base quickly, if you want to add in other things. And then I discovered that obviously that you can sort of surface mesh these things and you can you know just really quickly boolean this stuff without going crazy over some of the geometry. So I hope this is a useful tip for you guys out there who are using Cinema 4D to 3D print. Thanks for watching and don't forget to subscribe or check out blog.maxon.co.uk